We now present City at Night, which finds Keith and Dorothy on an unusual trip. Well, we're on our way. Away from the Earth. Look how small it's getting, Keith. Yeah, I wonder how fast we're going. We've landed somewhere. Oh, that was a fast trip. Let's get out. Okay. How is it down there? took such a fast trip in my life. Look, though. Isn't this a beautiful thing? Ooh, no it's... No trees. Uh, mountains. It's scary. Desert. Yeah, it is. I wonder where we are, huh? I don't know. Oh, look at it. Breathtaking. Oh, it is. Keith, look. Oh. What? I don't know. Look, I'm getting maybe, scared. Maybe, maybe we better get back in. Huh? huh? Look. Well, who who are they? I don't know. Suppose we better get back in the ship. I don't know, but they're coming our way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this may be it. <laughs> Do you win so soon? Uh -huh. Boy. Look at them. They don't look like they have any weight. They, they're just floating along. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know about this business. Let's, let's get back. Oh. Did you come from the Earth? Yes, and a uh, very, yes, very did. quick trip. So did these gentlemen. Oh, they did? They came from the same place you did. If they took those helmets off, we'd probably recognize them. You might have seen them before. Pardon me, uh, this is Miss Gardner. How do you do, Miss Gardner? And I'm Keith Hetherington. And Mr. you're a picture, right? That's right. You're the director of this picture. Uh, a picture? You know where you are. <laughs> you're on the surface of the moon. What? You're in the middle of the crater Harpalus on the moon. And these gentlemen have also come from the Earth in a spaceship, the same spaceship here. They're good. This is Mr. John Archer, who helped to build the ship. How are you, I'm Mr. Archer? Nice to know you. Uh, this is Mr. Warner Anderson. Hello. Who plays Dr. Card. Glad to know you, Warner. Designer of the How are you? This is Dick Wesson. Glad you to know you. Radar Hello. On radio. And this is Tom Powers. Hello. How are you, Tom? Air Force General. Very glad. Who instigated this trip. <laughs> well, you know, for a moment, they really did scare me. I don't wonder that you're frightened. You really do. You really ought to be dressed as they are. Well, these outfits amaze me. Uh, these are spacesuits. You see, they have to carry their own oxygen supply. They have to wear a helmet because there's no atmosphere right here on the moon. Uh -huh. There's no air at all as there is on the Earth. So if you'll notice on their backs, they carry two tanks of oxygen. These are the oxygen Since tanks. Since there's no air to carry sound, they can't speak to each other. They have to use walkie-talkies and communicate by radio. Oh, this is this this the walkie-talkie, the walkie-talkie, walkie and there's the aerial. Uh -huh. uh, this is their oxygen supply, which goes into the helmet that they uh -huh. wear. These suits normally on the moon, uh, where there is no atmosphere, you see, uh, being filled with oxygen, expand. Uh, that's why they look a little bit like teddy oh, bears. Oh, I see. And down, is this, what is this here? That has their radio control. Uh, for intercommunication and also communication with the ship. Uh, it also has the oxygen controls, so they can control the flow of oxygen from their tanks on their backs. I noticed uh, a little gadget here. What, what is this? For? I believe that's, uh, uh, that has something to do with their... What? Air intake and air uh, uh, it's oh. a valve. And that's the intake valve. here. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, exhaust, exhaust valve, here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I notice you, you carry a very fancy set of instruments on the oh, side yes. here, too. They have to have a flashlight. Yes. They have to have various tools that they may require in uh, uh, repairing uh, 
things on the exterior of the ship, uh -huh. as they have to do in this picture. Well, I notice that their suits, uh, their space suits, rather, are a different color. Is there any reason for that? Yes, identification. Uh, this is a, a, a very bleak landscape here, as you notice. And if they wore silvered suits, uh, they'd merge in the landscape. Uh, this is the only way that they can recognize each other from a distance. Oh, by the different colored suits. Yes, it also helps to uh, prevent anybody getting lost in all these rocky formations out here. Get lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, that is wonderful. Fellows, thanks a lot for uh, showing us uh, what the man from Mars, you might say, wears. It's the man from Earth. Man, the man from, Earth. from Earth. Oh. <laughs> man from Mars is a different kind of creature. Oh. We'll show you a lot more a little later. Uh, let's see. You have a rope on the other side. That's, That's a safety line. Uh huh. Just in case you get out in free fall or any place where you might need a safety line. Uh huh. This is on the ship. The These gentlemen space. were in an awful predicament last week. They had to make a repair on the exterior of the ship. Uh huh. Uh, so they put on their space suits and got out and walked all over the surface of the ship here, repairing a radar antenna. And they needed the safety lines because without those and uh, shoe boots with magnetic soles, of course, they could easily have floated off into space. In fact, one of them did. Uh -huh. We had quite Which a difficult... Uh, that was Dr. Cargraves. <laughs> oh. We had quite a difficult time getting him back onto the surface of the ship. We succeeded, and here he is tonight. How, how, did you, how did you finally get him back? I'd rather not tell. Oh, you want to talk? Let's <laughs> leave that for the picture. 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 Suffice it to say that he did get back. Here he is right now, uh, safe on the surface of the moon. Uh, Mr. Petzl, I'd like to have you, you turn, turn around, around just a little bit so that uh, our audience can see you. And tell us, uh, we haven't found out yet, what is the name of this picture? Picture is be called Destination Moon. Destination Moon. Uh, I think perhaps that you uh, will be interested now in meeting the gentleman who originated the idea well, first of making like, this picture. I'd like to find out a little bit more about you, Mr. Oh, I'm an old story. <laughs> <I'm all laughs> I'd like to find out something about the picture. Are you getting any particular kick, you might say, out of this picture over any other pictures you've directed? Kick? Since I graduated from college, I haven't had as much education as I've had on this one picture. <laughs> I've read books about rocketry, rocket flight. I've brushed up on astronomy. Uh, I know more about the laws of gravity now, the law of gravity, than I uh, ever dreamed I'd have to know. Uh -huh. uh, in addition to that, I've uh, had an experience which I believe most directors are supposed to enjoy. That is, putting actors through elaborate forms of torture. Oh. Oh. Uh, do you, do you, do you have any sympathy for these actors? I hadn't until last Saturday. <laughs> I wanted to make a photograph, a, a gag picture, you know, of me directing the actors from space. So they rigged me up and sent me floating 30-odd uh, feet above the stage floor. I then realized since they kept me up there about three quarters of an hour, <laughs> what I've been subjecting these nice fellows to. Uh, my state of mind is quite different now. I approach them when there's anything to do that defies the laws of gravity with a great deal of trepidation and consideration. <laughs> and so I'm, my dear fellow, do you mind doing this? <laughs> but they're good sports. Uh, they haven't minded so far, or at least they haven't complained about it too violently. Have you ever directed a picture that uh, was even approaching this in sensationalism? No. I've directed one other picture in which the principal characters had to get along without air because they operated underwater. Mm -hmm. A picture called Mr. Peabody and the Mermaid, an underwater picture. This is my first space picture. As a matter of fact, to the best of my knowledge, this is the first serious space picture that's been made in the United States. Way back in 1902, in France, they made a picture about a trip to the moon. And in 1928, they made one in Germany. But to the best of my knowledge, this is the first one to be made in this country. More than that, it's the first picture made about a trip to the moon in which they didn't find pretty girls there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now then, how, how did, where did the idea come mm -hmm. from a picture like this? Well, I don't know exactly where the idea came from. I know where I first heard about it, uh -huh. and that was from my good friend George Powell, who has nursed the idea of doing this picture for quite a while. 
I wonder I'd, if we could talk. I'd about like you to meet Mr. Powell. George? <laughs> Miss Gardner. Miss Gardner, Mr. Powell. Hello. Mr. Heatherton, Mr. Powell. Just you. How are you? You know the other fellows, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I live with them in the past four yes, weeks. I believe you. <laughs> well, Mr. Powell, where, where did you get the idea for a picture like this? Well, um, it isn't particularly my idea. I always look for something unusual, different, like we used to do it in, in the old Papa Tunes, uh -huh. if you remember. Well, everybody remembers <laughs> oh, the Papa Tunes. They were so cute. And then we felt that we grew out our short pants. We should have put on long pants. So instead of shorts, we decided to make features, long ones, you see? Mm -hmm. Still living yeah. in the world of fantasy, though. Yes, <laughs> in a way, although yes, we think I this think is, so. uh, this is uh, very near tomorrow, this uh, uh -huh. trip to the moon, I think. Really? Um, yes. Mm. Maybe you can give us some of the statistics on the picture. How long will it be before uh, the picture is released? And so oh, the picture will be... Uh, uh, pre-release, sometimes in February. Uh, we're and getting a sign uh, that they want you to see the television audience. I mean, <laughs> the audience to see you, too. <laughs> <laughs> it will be sometimes in February, uh -huh. and uh, then it goes in general release sometime in summer. Mm -hmm. But we pre-releasing is as fast as we can, being a hot subject, let's say. Uh -huh. Look at the blast here. <laughs> oh, sure, you can see That's that. Right. <laughs> see the... the uh, what is lava here? Is all scorched? scorched? Earth, yeah. yeah, scorched. scorched earth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's one of the most amazing picture sets that I've ever seen. Well, uh, we have a wonderful little family here together, mm -hmm. Mr. Pitchell, and the head of the table. And uh, I would like to call some of the people who are behind the screen, if I may. Oh, oh I would. Yeah. We'd like very much to meet. Uh, them. I would uh, like to. Uh, uh, Call Mr. Highland, the originator of this uh, story. Uh -huh. uh, he wrote the story. This is Mr. Bob Highland, Dorothy and Keith. How, do How you are you, Bob? Hello. How do you do? Uh, so, uh, Bob, I wonder if you'd step, uh, maybe if you'd step around here on the other side of Dorothy, so that we can uh, we can ask you a few questions too. Um, tell us about this trip to the moon. Do you do you think this is possible? Oh yes, yes, it's quite possible. We're here, aren't we? Not only yes. are we here, but uh, it can be done. It can be done as soon as anyone is willing to put the bill to do it. Mm -hmm. There are no new scientific principles to be discovered to accomplish this trip. It's simply a case of money and engineering development. Well, how long would it take to take a trip to the moon? Well, this particular trip is figured for a 46-hour orbit. Mm -hmm. There are various orbits that could be selected. In Jules Verne's book about a trip to the moon, he had a 100-hour orbit. That is equally correct. Uh -huh. It depends on your speed of departure. Oh, I see. Uh, I think it would be very interesting just to take a, a camera sweep around this huge set here and see what the moon looks like. You know, we saw it at Griffith Park the other day. Yes, night. we did. Uh -huh. And uh, this is, um, I am told, an authentic reproduction of what the moon looks like. Uh, are these mountains here, George? Are they, are they uh, craters? Or? Well, uh, let me call Mr. Chesley Bonnestall and Ernst Fechter, who are the visual artists in oh, the I picture. See. Oh, I Oh, Mr. Chesley Bonnestall is a very well-known astronomer. How are you, Mr. Bonnestall? Hello. Mr. Ernst Fechter. How, How are you, Mr. Fechter? Hello. Hello. I think this gentleman right. can give you All the right. answer. About we were just wondering, uh, they sort of look like mountains to us. Uh, or are they volcanoes, or what? Well, well, we'll, we'll let you answer that, because you're the... Well, there's a crater about 24 uh, miles in diameter, and those mountains are about 12 miles away and about 10,000 feet high. And uh, the floor of the crater has been flooded with lava, so it's quite level, as you see. And then all these uh, various uh, formations are due to the dropping of volcanic uh, bombs and eruptions and thrust up through the... Uh, valley of the crater, through the floor of the crater. Uh, is this, uh, this is perfectly barren then, there. there's no vegetation? No vegetation, no life whatever, everything burned out and frozen, uh -huh. frozen lava. Uh, what, is, what is the climate here? Is it, uh... Well, it's intensely, uh, there is no temperature really because there's nothing to conduct heat. Or <coughs> the, the, uh, the temperature in the shade the, you, is well, it's terribly cold, cold and it's terribly, terribly hot. Terribly hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, this, incidentally, is going to be in Technicolor. No one has mentioned it up to now. 
And, uh, of course, for us here in Hollywood, who, uh, who have a subject like this to play with, uh -huh. uh, the temptation is, is, is rather great, you know, to, uh, to glamorize the moon. Uh -huh. Now, uh, Mr. Bonnestell here, my good friend Chesley, is keeping me straight, or he's pinning me down so I can't go wild. Is that right? No. But, well, he's the man who knows how it really... I think he's been there. No, there's no, Have you, Chesley? <laughs> there, there's, no, there's no cheesecake in so. no? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, in other words, pretty girls don't come running out. <laughs> no, but, uh, but we have, uh, we have we're, we're trying to make a picture which doesn't glamorize the moon, which is based on scientific fact as we know it and of uh, all information that is available. And uh, uh, Mr. Bonestell, Mr. Heinlein, they've studied the subject uh, to exhaustion. They know, they, know, uh, they know what it's all about on the moon. <laughs> Uh, how, do, how did you gain all this knowledge about the moon? Well, just through the years, since I was 10 years old, I've been a student of astronomy and uh -huh. uh, working in the motion picture business. I realized that you could combine the technique of motion pictures and the methods we use to produce realism in these astronomical effects. Uh -huh. uh, you had a series of pictures in uh, Life magazine a while back, didn't you? Yes. On the moon. Yes, I remember on the moon that. And a book. Uh -huh. Yes, a book. And a book he just... Oh, yes. Conquest, the conquest, the conquest of Space. space. Uh -huh. Conquest of Space. Uh, let's see. Let's hold it this way. So the... Incidentally, uh, I want to get one of those books autographed, too. <laughs> incidentally, this looks very much like the rocket we have, the base of which you see here. Yes, it was. The one you know, we just got out of. We have, uh, we, have, we have many scenes in the picture which will show the complete rocket. This is only the base of the thing, you uh -huh. see the bottom of it but we have uh, we have many scenes wh which are which are done with many tricks that we uh, use to accomplish them we see the entire rocket really come going from uh, the earth to the for the from, from the earth to the moon uh -huh. and back again well that's wonderful <laughs> well thank you very much mr bonestell thank you. um thank you very much i wonder if there uh, if you wouldn't like to see some of the uh, other sets that we've used in this oh, picture uh, uh, on stage three, we have the interior of the control cabin of this uh, of this rocket ship. Oh, the rocket ship that we arrived. There's one thing I'd like mm -hmm. to say about Chesley Bonestell, with uh -huh. whom you've just been talking, he is a man who has a supreme gift for painting with complete photographic accuracy and realism uh -huh. things that nobody has ever seen. Uh, if you'll go this way, we'll go over to stage three and Could see some of the other sets there. Could we just sort of look around yeah, a few minutes let, before? Yes, we go? of course. Yeah, let's let's see if we can get some uh, some good pictures of this lava here that we're standing on. These huge cracks here. By all means. That is so real. It, 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 yes. Mr. Colors, who painted this set. Mr. Colors, who painted this set. Mr. Colors. Oh, this is the gentleman oh, who painted yes. this set. I would like to introduce Mr. Colors, who helped me do this wonderful How are you, Mr. Hello. Colors? Hello. I think, I think We've been should. admiring your work, shall I say. It's beautiful. Uh, it's mostly hard labor. Oh, it is. Right. And admiring enthusiasm, your hard labor. of course. It took him three but weeks to paint, and it has to be good painted, doesn't it? Huh? Yeah, Take? mostly. <laughs> have you done this, have you done this by yourself? Uh, yes, with the, si the assistance of two, three men uh -huh. to lay it in rather, and then I go over it and paint and the whole shooting the match touches, to the last <laughs> rest. Well, uh, oh. it's an amazing realism. Well, he's I done say. some wonderful work in the past, and I think he's surpassed himself now uh -huh. in the painting. I think it's, it's one of the most terrific. interesting uh, things I have done probably in the motion picture I industry. I imagine so. Because it is very serious taking, and most of the co-workers are as serious uh -huh. as you make them right here. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we'll get ready now and go over to the other stage uh, with Mr. Uh, Fletcher. There's one other person I'd like you to meet. All right, oh, fine. Good. Duke Goldstone. Uh, Hello. Hello. Hi, Mr. Goldstone. Hello, Duke Goldstone you? is the cutter or editor of the picture. Oh, yes. Oh. You see, when you see a movie on the screen, uh -huh. you think you see continuous action. Uh -huh. But what you really see are a whole lot of little pieces of film which are glued together so they make sense. Uh -huh. That's his responsibility. Oh, and he is, I see. He's, he's the man that leaves a lot of faces <laughs> on the floor, too. Yeah, this time of the year. Yes, man I in the think moon. there'll be some people, you know. <laughs> the man in the moon, undoubtedly, was what he left on the floor. <laughs> And all the Solonites and those pretty girls I spoke of that they used to discover uh -huh. in the older pictures, moon pictures. Well, there's a lot of science to that and a lot of just plain hard work, too. Well, a lot of plain hard work, but <laughs> Mr. Pitchell makes it pretty easy for me. 
We try to shoot the film right? so that it isn't too difficult to huh, put together. Well, Every right. now and then we create problems. All right, fine. Shall we, shall we go over to the other... Uh, Let's go to stage. Right. Now? No? right. You'll just go this way? <laughs> Say, this is a huge set. I wonder, while we're walking over here, Mr. Uh, Petchel, if you could give us the dimensions of this uh, stage here. Well, I think this is about... Uh, 173 by 120. What was that, Mr. 173 Powell? by 120. 170 feet wide, 173 feet long. Uh, and it mm. covers the entire stage. That's right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so I know that uh, all of our friends out in the television audience will be looking forward to... Uh, the date that this picture is released so that they can go to the theater and see it. Right. Wait a minute. Destination. Wait a minute. I've got... Having a little difficulties here. Of course, this happens on uh, these remote broadcasts because we do work under terrific uh, obstacles. Uh, I think I'll find out just a moment, Mr. Petzl. Do we do we take this mic over there, Johnny? Do we take this mic all the way through? All right. Now we're free. Oh, good. You know, that's, Mr. Petzl, uh, this is this is one of the things that makes the the City at Night program so interesting, is the difficulties that we have to work under getting from place to place, distances. Here we're, we're moving probably 100 yards now to another studio. Uh, there's one thing I'd like to, uh, to impress upon you and also upon the television audience, and that is that you didn't accidentally find us working here tonight. We didn't? We came here especially to receive you. Well, we are certainly <laughs> happy for that. Oh, thank you. Our day began early this morning, uh -huh. and we were at it for a good uh, nine and a half, ten hours. And then we thought it would be very pleasant to come back this evening and meet you. Well, I'm certainly glad you did. Oh, well, we, we certainly appreciate it, too. Well, we don't know what might have happened to you if you'd landed on the moon and we weren't there to guide you. We would have been frightened <laughs> yes. to death, I'll tell you that. You might have fallen into crevices. Uh, Possibly. Got lost in those lava formations. Well, Most anything could happen to you on the moon. Huh? <laughs> 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 